Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at how you can use the List and Spreadsheets feature of the TI Inspire to approximate the values of definite integrals. The example we'll use comes from the question number two on the 2019 Advanced Placement AB exam. This problem presented a particle P moving along the x-axis and it gave selected times and velocities for that particle. The times were measured in hours and we had five selected times ranging from 0 to 4 and then the corresponding velocities measured in meters per hour at those times. Alright, now what we're going to do is use the lists and spreadsheets feature. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a page that will give us a spreadsheet. So I'll go down here under the Documents menu, select Insert, and then we'll select number 6, Lists and Spreadsheets. And what that's going to do is give us a fresh spreadsheet. And column A, I'm going to title that T for time. And then column B, I'm going to label as VP for the velocity of particle P. Now that we have those columns labeled, we'll just need to fill in the values that we were given from that table. So in the T column, I'll go ahead and enter the times. They were 0, 0 0.3, 1.7, and 4. I'll do likewise over in column for VP. I'll enter the corresponding velocities. Those were 0, 55, negative 29, 55 again, and finally at time t equal 4 we had a velocity of 48. Okay, now that these are entered, uh, we're going to use the spreadsheet features to manipulate this data in finding some definite integral approximations. One of the first calculations we'll need to do is to figure out the width of our subintervals that are determined by these time values. So I'm titling column C as delta t, and there will only be four subintervals. The five values are like fence posts, so we'll have four intervals. Our first interval it's going to be from 0 to 0 0.3 and the length of that interval would be just equal to, I'll use cell references here, A2 minus A1. That will give us the length of 0 0.3. Now I could do a similar thing for each cell, but what I can do here is just use the spreadsheet feature and fill down and it's going to mimic that formula accordingly. So notice it's automatically figured out I would want A3 minus A2, A4 minus A3, and so on to give me the delta t's for the rest of my t-values. Okay, now let's go over to column D. We're going to title that left R. That's for a left Riemann sum. And we have all the data that we need now. We have our delta t values, and we're going to use the left endpoint of each subinterval. So the velocity is our column B. So I'm taking B1, my first velocity, the one on the left, times C2. That was the length of our first time interval. And then I'm going to fill down. So notice I'm getting 55 times 1.4, negative 29 times 1.1. 55 times 1.2. So those are each of the contributions of the left products, if you will. Now I'm going to do a similar thing in column E for a right rectangle, or right Riemann sums. And that's going to, I'm going to take the uh, right endpoint of each interval, the velocity there, times the length of the subinterval. Once I do that for that first cell, which was equal to B2 times C2, I could just fill down and it gives me the rest of those products. Great. Let's go ahead and 
figure out what we would need to do for a trapezoidal sum. Now here I need to figure out the average heights. Um, if I'm thinking of a trapezoid, that will be actually the average velocity of the particle over each subinterval. Now it'll just be the average of the left and right endpoint velocities. So for my first average, that'll be the average of b2 plus b1 divided by 2. And then once we have that value, again, we can just fill down to get the other averages. And now we're going to multiply each one of these by the corresponding delta t. And that will give us the components of our trapezoidal sum. So here we'll do F2 times C2, that's where our delta t's were. And once we've done one of those values, again, this handy fill down feature makes it easy to fill in the rest of the table. Okay, now we've got all these values. Uh, we haven't actually found the sums yet. So let's go over to the left Riemann sum column and go ahead and total the values in that column. And those ran from D2 through D5. Okay, and for the right rectangle sum or Riemann sum, we'll do the sum of E2 through E5. And for the trapezoidal, now these were the averages, so if we want to actually go to the products over here in column G, and I'll sum G2 through G5. Keep in mind that on the AP exam, if you're asked for an approximation to a definite integral, they'll want to see all of the uh, components for the sum that you come up with. Now on the AB question 2, uh, they actually asked for the trapezoidal approximation over just the first three subintervals. So I've gone ahead and summed just G2 through G4, and this was the answer that was expected on that question of 40.75. Now I've gone back to my time and velocity values and I wanted to illustrate that all of our computations were made based on the references to the values in these two columns. So I'm going back and editing my time values to, to some new time values. These ones are just integers from 1 through 4. And I'm going to go ahead and change a couple of the velocity values. I'm just uh, pretending that we had a new data table here. But once I've made these changes, because I've used cell references, all of the computations in the spreadsheet have been automatically updated. And so, in a sense, we've got a general spreadsheet for doing left, right, and trapezoidal sums. Uh, you might have to fill down further, but you could use this for uh, lots of different approximations from data tables. Well, that concludes this video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.